Yeah, yes, I'd, I'd like to thank the, the organisers for, in, for inviting me to, um, to, to, to speak uh, this morning. I'll be speaking about the, uh, the work that I'm, um, and various others are in, in, uh, doing for Task, task Group 91, which I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member, uh, looking at uh, the evidence for dose, rate, dose and dose rate effects in humans and, and animals. And um, so after a sort of introduction, looking at some of the, the, the concepts, in particular the, the crucial uh, ones of uh, low dose effectiveness factor, dose rate extrapolation factor, and DDREF, um, making a slight detour to, to, um, to, to examine whether, whether we, can, we can actually do without these concepts to, to some extent by, by directly uh, estimating. Uh, dose at um, uh, some risks at low doses and low, low dose rates, looking at uh, three, uh, three study, types of study uh, listed there. Um, and then in the final part of uh, my talk, look, look, uh, trying to see what we can, we can learn about DDREF, LDEF and DREF from, from animal data. So um, for many um, uh, experimental and ep ep epidemiologic data sets, we um, it's, it's, it's often been uh, the case that you can model the dose response by a sort of a, a linear quadratic um, uh, function, as, as, as shown at the top here. And the, 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 the low dose extrapolation factor is simply the ratio of the slope obtained by fitting a, the linear model, in other words, the model with just the alpha D term, uh, over the full dose range to the the, the limiting low dose slope of the, the linear quadratic model that you, f you fit over the, the full dose range. Um, so this gives you, if you like, the, the, the measure of, of, um, uh, of overestimation of risks that you get from, um, by, by, by fitting a linear model to, to say, its cancer dose response um, uh, data. Um, so, uh, and estimates of LDF have been made by var various people, uh, myself and, and uh, and, and, and various people in, um, at RERF. And for solid cancers, the, the best, the, the estimates that, that were made anyway about 10 years ago were about 1.1 to 1.5, and a bit higher than that, about 2.5 for, for, for leukemia. Um, and th this, this suggests that um, at doses of about um, um, 100 milligray, uh, the, um, the quadratic term would contribute about uh, one to three percent of the the total excess, and for leukemia, it would be about eighteen percent. So this provides, if you like, some some measure of support for the, the why you might might regard 0.1 gray as low dose, and this is a consideration supported by um, uh, the BA7 committee in particular. Um, so um, more, more recently. Um, uh, I've looked again at this question in the context of TG91, uh, looking in particular at the two, two um, um, uh, incidents and, and mortality data from the lifespan study. Uh, so fitting the, the, the sort of uh, linear quadratic functions of, of dose with adjustment for various other uh, um, things like age and exposure and sex. Um, and um, for the mortality data, as you can see from the, uh, the penultimate column, the, 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 the column second from the right, um, the, the, the LDEF, the ratio of the linear to the, 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 the linear part of the, the linear quadratic, um, is about 1.2 uh, for all solid cancers, but um, there's, there's considerable variation, so um, some, some sites have much larger um, LDEFs, so for example, colon over six, uh, but some uh, less than one. And um, although you can't see it from this slide, there, there are indications of, of larger curvature uh, with LDS of up to about two over the lower dose range if you, if you sort of truncate the, the A-bomb data at, at two, two, two sieverts. Uh, this is the, now the, um, the, the most recent can, can, cancer incidence data, the um, solid cancer incidence data. Um, same sort of thing, but um, I'm showing, showing now the... Um, the, in the various parts of, these, the, 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 uh, of this slide, first of all, the effect of dose range, in, in other words, if you restrict it by, uh, to be less than two sieverts or less than one, um, and then, uh, then also the, the effect of restricting the follow-up. Um, so uh, 
as you can see, the, the LDF is about, looking at the, again at the second column from the right, um, is uh, 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 between 1.3 and 1.4 overall, um, with, um, with some indication that if you, if you cut down the dose range, for example, to uh, under two sieverts, you, you get the, the LDF goes up a bit to um, 1.5. And, and also, interestingly, that, that there seems to be, oh, sorry, um, an indication of that the curvature might be um, stronger in, in more recent periods. As you can see, if you, if you restrict uh, follow-up to less than 2001 or less than 1991, the, the LDF goes down quite, quite, quite substantially. So it looks as if there's more curvature in the, in the, in the more recent data, which is interesting in itself. Um, so, um, the, the, as well as the, the, the extrapolation of dose, there's, there's a question of the extrapolation of dose rate. And this has long been known from radiobiological data to, to this, is the, this, the, 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 this can operate uh, quite independently from the, the, the dose extrapolation. And so, analogous to um, LDF, you, have, you can construct a thing called dose rate effectiveness factor, DREF, which just measures the ratio of risk at a given dose incurred at, at high dose rate to that at, at, at the same dose incurred at, at low dose rate. Um, so, um, and, and you can combine this with um, LDF to get uh, DDREF, of course, and um, um, ICRP, um, estimated, uh, of course, DDREF of two based on um, some, uh, some human and some quite old radiobiological data uh, from Oak Ridge and various other places. Uh, um, there have been recent attempts to, to estimate DDREF in other ways, and, and one, one that's um, um, which, is, which in fact is being, being used in TG91, um, fo follows on from a sort of quite celebrated and, and I guess a controversial paper, still controversial paper by um, uh, Peter Jacob, uh, published about t nearly 10 years ago now, um, in which they, 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 they basically did a, a meta-analysis look, looking at um, uh, nu various groups of, of, nu of nuclear workers and, and uh, comparing risks with the with those in the A-bomb data. Um, it's, it's an interesting idea, um, but I, th I think that, that there's, there's, there's fundamental problems with this method, that, that, that you're, you're comparing um, base risks from d completely different popu uh, underlying populations, in particular the, the, the worker cohorts are, 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 are for largely Western populations, uh, the, and, and the, the lifespan study, of course, is, is, ja is Japanese, uh, which have very different uh, underlying rates of, of cancer, you know, irrespective of the radiation element. Um, and it's known, for example, that breast cancer, d d the relative risk transfer is not, would not be right. N an absolute risk transfer would be much better. Um, so anyway, but, but this, this work is, is it, it's the only way that we, we have really of, of using human data. And so I, th I think it is, it does, does, it does have some value, but you just have to, it, one has to be cautious. Um, so, Turning now to the second part of my talk about what, how we can directly estimate risk at low dose and low dose rate, um, I'm first going to look at s studies of childhood cancer in relation to obstetric um, in utero radiation exposure. The most celebrated of these, and probably the largest such study, is the, the so-called Oxford Survey of Childhood Cancers, the OSCC. And um, this showed that there were risks of about, um, was similar risks of about 50% elevation, as you can see, for a, a large number of, of malignant endpoints follow, following um, obstetric radiation exposure. Uh, but there have been lo a large number of other studies, as, as, as illustrated on this slide, um, case, uh, case control studies look, looking at um, ob the effects of obstetric radiation exposure. The, and as you can see, look, looking at the, 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 the relative risks on the right and comparing it with the, the, these are ordered basically chronologically. So, and as you can see, as, as time has marched on, uh, we go from the, the period of the Oxford survey in particular at, at the top to um, the current period at the bottom, the, the risks have steadily decreased, um, which is very likely uh, because of the, the lower obstetric radiation doses used. 
And you can see this um, actually in, in, in the Oxford survey data itself. I mean, this, this shows the, on, on, the, on the left the, uh, the, the dose per uh, film by calendar year. Um, various estimates have been made of this, but um, uh, the, the line, if you like, the, the solid line shows the, if the, the best estimate of, of dose uh, as a function of, of, of year. And as you can see, it's coming down quite, quite, quite markedly with, with, with increasing time. And, this, and it, pr it pretty much matches the, the, the way risk has been coming down in the Oxford survey uh, um, by year of birth. You can, you, the, um, as you, the, the central solid line shows, shows the, the way, way risk has changed over, over time, and the risk, the risk per, uh, uh, per obstetric x-ray exam. So, um, uh, so, yeah, this gives another indication of what's, what's, what's going on here in terms, in terms of the, the, the change in obstetric practice, and the, the, the change in, in x-ray technique. Um, so, the, the, these, contra these, these obstetric case control studies are, 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 high, are still, I think, quite controversial. And there are a number of, of problems that have been raised um, with them. Um, in particular, differences between the um, the risks that are seen in utero and the fact that quite often you, you don't see any risks after birth. Uh, well, this can be to some extent, um, I think this is, this is now, um, uh, it's understood that there are in fact biological differences between um, the, the, the two periods and that um, there is good reason to think that risks would not be the same um, it, it, for, for, for a neutral exposure and, and the period even a, f a few, few months af after birth. The, there are, the other problem that's, that's been raised uh, is, is the, the difference between the, co the, f the cohort studies of, of obstetric exposure and, and the case control studies. Um, I mean, in general, the, the, co the cohort studies are, are, are mostly underpowered. And in some cases, they are subject to, uh, to bias. And for example, the, 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 the cohort study of, of Court Brown and, 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 and Doll and colleagues um, in the early 1960s um, uh, is now thought to be, in, in particular, was, was thought to be by, by Richard Doll subject to selection bias. Um, the other s s problem with the, um, the, the studies is the, the, the possible incompatibility with the lifespan study in utero sample. Um, but in fact, um, uh, this is, I don't think, again, an issue. Uh, if you, if you, certainly the relative risks, as, as shown um, in, in the, the the, the Japanese um, data are, are quite compatible with those in the Oxford survey data. Um, so, um, a, an interesting recent study looking at the effects of in, in utero exposure is the, uh, was, was published actually now nearly 10 years ago by, by Dale Preston, uh, looking, looking in fact at the, what's going on in the, 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 um, uh, the Japanese A-bomb um, in utero and, and, and early childhood um, exposure sample. And as you can see from this slide, the, 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 the relative risk is, 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 well, although it's a bit lower uh, for in utero exposure than early childhood exposure, it's compatible uh, uh, in the two periods, whereas the, the absolute risk is, is clearly not. The, the absolute risk is, is very, very much lower for in utero exposure than um, uh, early childhood exposure. Um, another, I think, interesting insight is, is given by the, um, uh, the uh, what, what's going on in, in relation to um, chromosomal aberrations in, in the, um, the, the, the mothers that were exposed and, and in their children. Um, now, this, this slide superimposes the effects of, of both. The, 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 the squares that you see are the, are the, the chromosome aberrations in, in the mothers as a function of dose. Um, and you can see that they, they progressively increase in, in the way you'd expect. The, 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 what's going on in the children is much more interesting. You see that there's a, there's a suggestion of, a, of an increased um, risk uh, at about the up going, going up to about 100 mi uh, milligray, after which uh, the risk, well, the chromosome aberration rate sort of comes down. Uh, you can see there's this cluster of, cluster of dots at sort of the, um, at the left end, which, which oh, sorry. We lost that. Anyway, you can see the, um, uh, the this this uh, 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 involution in the dose response at about the 100 millisievert uh, uh, region. 
um, which suggests that there may be some, some sort of high, low dose hypersensitivity hypersensitivity amongst the neutral exposed, but not their, their mothers, which would explain why we haven't seen um, uh, in utero uh, leukemias in, in this uh, population. Um, so now looking at another category of studies, the uh, so-called background radiation studies, um, um, I'll skip rapidly over this because I think we're, out, we, we're running out of time, but, um, uh, but there have been a number of studies looking at um, uh, childhood cancer in relation to natural background radiation. In particular, there's a, a big, big study in the UK, the results of which are shown here. Um, and as you can see, there's a highly significant excess risk for all leukemia, but not much for an, any other type of cancer. Um, this slide sh shows the UK study at the top uh, and the, the risks for the various types of cancers there um, uh, across the, the top, and, and also the results of various other um, studies of background radiation. Um, so, um, the, the two studies which, which, which have found uh, significant effects are the, the UK study and the Swiss study, which is very much smaller. Um, and um, there's generally no, no excess risk for, for cancers other than leukemia, apart from the, 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 the significant excess seen for um, CNS cancers in, in the, the Swiss study. Um, uh, the, the interesting study here is the, because it's the, the same size as the UK um, and uh, uh, in terms of the number of cases and the same sort of dose distribution probably um, and as you can see the risk is uh, basically zero in, in that study with quite, quite narrow confidence intervals which um, we're still trying to work out what's going on in that study, what, why the, why the confidence intervals should, should be so much narrower than in the UK study. Um, um, the, uh, the other category of, of low dose, if not low dose rate study, of course, is the, um, the, the studies of, of computerized tomography. Um, this slide just shows the, the risks from the UK study for um, leukemia and brain cancer and puts them against the risks that have been seen. So that, that, that's shown in the, in the top row of this table. Um, and, oh, and that's shown uh, in contrast with the, the, the next row down is the, um, the risks in the lifespan study, the comparable um, age and exposure group. And as you can see, the, the risks are pretty much the same. Um, and they're also similar to, to those in the background radiation study, the UK, the UK NRCT study. Um, uh, but there are possible other problems with the brain cancer findings, at least in the UK um, CT study, which... Um, uh, have attracted some attention. So, uh, in the last part of my talk, I'm just going to talk about um, what we can learn about uh, DDREF, LDEF, and um, uh, DREF from animal data. So, um, ICRP estimated a DDREF of two, and BS7 uh, sort of a, 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 a figure about 1.5, and they both were based on some quite old um, animal data, in particular the, the, the BS7 estimate was using, using um, Oak Ridge um, uh, uh, mouse data um, uh, and in, in conjunction with, with um, uh, the current or re re reasonably current uh, lifespan study solid cancer incidence data uh, estimated this um, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a more or less statistically rigorous way. Um, however, the, the animal data used by both committees was, was simply summary data, which is in fact all that exists for these, um, the Oak Ridge data now, and, and may not have been properly analysed, for example, using life shortening and not taking account of uh, intercurrent mortality. Um, so, um, work that I and, and various others, in particular Gail Wallachak, has done recently is focused on a, 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 um, a very much very much more recent body of data, uh, and, and in, indeed a, a very large body of data uh, produced uh, by Douglas Grant and colleagues at the, the Janus uh, reactor at, at Argonne National Labs in the, in the 70, period 1970 to 92. Um, so as you can see, nearly 50,000 mice, no, actually over 50,000 mice, uh, mostly the, the, uh, the common house mouse, but um, a few other strains um, were treated with a mixture of um, gamma and neutrons at varying doses and dose rates and um, uh, so 
the um, Haley and colleagues p uh, published a paper a few years ago, uh, and were, were examining in particular the the, the BS7 model and conclu and concluded that um, the the, sort of the the simple linear quadratic model that they they recommended. Uh, Clearly, did not fit this 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 uh, mouse data at all well, um, and um, they derived um, by various means estimates of DDREF um, uh, based on the on this data, um, which ranged uh, which covered a very wide range, as you can see, from from point nine up to uh, positive infinity. Um, but there are certain problems with the the with the linear, the, the statistical technique. At, at, uh, used by Haley et al. In, in some cases, they 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 used a, a linear model which uh, does not have the correct um, error structure and reduces nonlinearities in model fitting. So, um, I and a, a colleague at um, NCI, um, uh, uh, Van Tran, have, have have looked again at this data um, and um, fitting fitting a, a slightly more general model than the one that. Um, was fitted by by um, Haley and colleagues, and in particular, um, uh, well, it, it was fitted also uh, using what I would regard, regard as the the right model, which is a, a sort of a, a, a the Cox model using using a ages a time scale. So, uh, and then and then appropriately adjusting by stratification for um, various things, and and also lagging dose in the way that I think you have to 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 um, uh, in, in an, um, analogous to what, what's done in, in human data. Um, so I estimated both a low-dose extrapolation factor and a DREF um, and um, use, using the, the five milligray uh, per hour threshold suggested by ICRP to estimate the effect at, uh, of, of dose rate extrapolation. Um, and we'll just turn straight to the results now for, for running out of time. Um, and this apologies for this rather busy slide, but the, um, the, 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 the column of numbers at right at the left shows the, 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 the high dose rate um, extrapolation of, of dose, and um, uh, the one in the middle, the, the low dose ex rate extrapolation of, of dose, and the, the final co rightmost column shows the, the dose rate effect I extrapolation it itself. Um, and as you can see, the, the interesting thing here is that uh, well, the, the LDEF certainly are, are, are for, for certainly for all tumours, uh, are, are pretty nearly one. They're, they're not significantly different from one. Um, there's a, a, a suggestion uh, of uh, that for, for non-cancer disease, the LDEF might be higher, about about 1.6, um, and. Um, uh, but but the, the other thing to notice is that uh, there, there are quite a few uh, malignant endpoints where the the, L, the the LDEF is actually less than one, and in some cases significantly so. Um, for DREF, the 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 story is a bit different. That there you can see that there is uh, for for most endpoints, the, the DREF certainly all malignant endpoints. It, it's between 1.2 and 2.3. Um, uh, so uh, but. but most of these are not significantly different from one, but nevertheless, there are indications there that DREF might be between one and two. The, mo the most uh, controversial findings, I, th I think, are in relation to, to, to the effect of neutron exposure, um, which um, exactly the same format here as on the previous slide. So we have the LDF at high dose rate, then low dose rate, and then the, in the final column, um, the dose rate extrapolation factor. And as you can see, the LDF um, is generally now less less than one. Uh, so, for example, for all tumour, as you can see, it's point it's it's about point four nine. Imply implying, in other words, that that one, one is one is um, uh, underestimating um, the, the the neutron dose um, effect at low dose by by a linear extrapolation, um, and the and most of the the, the DREFs are also. Uh, very low, like b between zero and, and 0 0.2, and many significantly less than one. Uh, both of these, I think, are, are really quite challenging findings. Um, so to conclude, um, we've seen that we've introduced these, these, these measures of LDF, the low-dose extrapolation factor, and the DREF, the dose rate extrapolation factor, 
Um, um, and we've seen that D DDREF essentially combines these two into, into one. Um, there's some evidence of low dose and low dose rate risk in obstetric and, and uh, background radiation studies. Um, and as we can see, the, 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 uh, the, the current Janus data suggests that for LDF is probably less than one for, for many malignant endpoints, and, 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 um, but the DREF could be greater than one uh, and, up, and up to about two and a half. Uh, but for neutrons, it looks like both are less than one. Um, and these are both quite challenging findings that I think need replication, if replication is, is possible now. Um, but, and that's it. Thank you, thank you very much.